everyone. Thank you so much for coming out and spending this beautiful day with us. Of all the events that we do in Old Bridge throughout the year, I have to say this is absolutely my very favorite. It means something to me, it means something to all of you, which is why you're all here. And we're grateful that you're here. Thank you. Thank you for participating in the parade. Thank you for everything. I'd like to call over the Old Bridge High School ROTC Color Guard to present their colors. Will everyone please join me in saying the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag, to the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Meg. Please welcome Megan Valenzuela, who's going to sing the national anthem for us. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight are the we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in there gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spell Megan, thank you so much. What a beautiful voice. May the Lord our God bless all present here to memorialize those who lived and died to preserve liberty and freedom in our nation and in the world. And may the Lord our God remember all those who sacrificed, gave, give, gave this nation its greatness and riches. God of power and mercy, you destroy war and draw an earthly pride. Banish violence from our midst and wipe away our tears that we may all be your sons and daughters. Keep in your mercy those men and women who have died in the cause of freedom and bring them safely into your kingdom of justice and peace. We ask this as we ask all things through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. amen. Thank you everyone for joining us here this morning on this very special day for citizens, for our nation, and for nations around the world. I'll get some housekeeping out of the way as I introduce some of the dignitaries that have joined me on stage. Uh, Council President Mary Sohar, Council Vice President Debbie Walker, Council at Large Anita greenberg Belli, we have uh, Councilman Eric De Palma, Councilman Kevin Garcia, Councilwoman Jill DeCaro, and Councilman Kieran Desai, thank you for being here with us today. And as I said, good morning, and what a beautiful morning it is here in the great town of Oldbridge. Thank you for coming out this Memorial Day and assisting and participating in today's event in which we pay tribute and honor those and acknowledge the sacrifices made by the men and women who have paid the price for our freedom with their lives. Since inception, our nation, the United States of America, has been the greatest contributor 
to promoting, establishing, and protecting democracy around the world. And I know as we are, as Americans, we are biased. But our opinion is that no other country in the world even comes close to the United States in accomplishing the task of assisting in a time of need. And the only reason that we can boast and we can make that claim is because of the men and women who are, who have, who are currently, and who will be in the near future in uniform serving in our military, the greatest military in the world. Because of those who have willingly put themselves in harm's way, those who have gone to strange places to defend and fight for strangers, those who have left their loved ones behind, knowing it might be the last time. Today and every day, we're here for those who did pay the ultimate price for our and your freedom and the freedoms that are enjoyed around the world. Because of the sacrifices our soldiers of the United States have made. Today, as Americans, we stand, we stand with pride. And we also must stand and reflect upon the unthinkable, the unimaginable, and the uncomprehensible pain suffered by those in the past, those suffering now, and those who will suffer in the future as the war on terrorism and the attacks upon democracy continue. And let's talk a little bit about pain, the unimaginable, the, unim the suffering. I hope I'm not dating myself, <laughs> but in yesterday's newspaper, there was a story about the HMT Rania, a British transport ship where 1,015 U.S. soldiers perished at sea that day on November 25th, 1943. And 35 more U.S. servicemen who succumbed to their injuries in the subsequent days. Their families were never told what happened despite the Rona being the greatest loss of American life, of U.S. life at sea, due to enemy action. The disaster was declared classified indefinitely, and all survivors and rescuers were ordered to remain silent. Parents went to their grave knowing, never knowing what happened to their boys. All they knew was that they never came home. As you see, the American and British government at the time thought it was the best interest to the public, the public, us, the people at home, not knowing about the event. But more importantly, they were afraid of the weapon that was used to sink that ship. And they thought it was in the best interest not to tell us. It wasn't until 2000 when an act of Congress honored those who perished honored those who rescued and paid tribute to the survivors for their bravery and courage. Those soldiers, their generations of family are why we are gathered here today, 80 years, 80 years later. Unbelievable, unfathomable, unthinkable, but true. So please, I encourage everyone to look it up, read about it. Those soldiers who perished that day for our freedom, deserve our respect, and they deserve to be in our thoughts and prayers. Let us honor all those from Madison Township, Old Bridge Township, who have left their, left their beautiful town, our beautiful town. And they went to serve and protect and defend our way of life, and they did pay the ultimate sacrifice. We've lost a number of young men to war. So I want to thank you all for being here today. 
thank you for allowing me to stand here today. And especially thank you to all our veterans and those currently serving in the armed forces. Would you please stand today and be recognized? Please, veterans, active members, please stand. Thank you for your service. We owe everything to you. Everyone in the township, the staff, thank you for putting this ceremony together. It is our finest, it is our finest moment as Americans, as residents of Old Bridge. I will close by saying, may God bless you and your family. May God continue to bless the great township of Old Bridge. And of course, may God bless America, the greatest nation on earth. Thank you all and be well. Thank you. Okay, now we're gonna talk about our Grand Marshal for the 2023 Corporal Chaplain Assistant United States Army, Armando Sasso. Mr. Sasso is not feeling well today and he could not join us. But it's important to know, and we have a speech that he has written, I've prepared a proclamation. But Mr. Sasso is a World War II veteran. He will be turning 100 years old in August. I've had the honor and privilege of sitting next to Mr. Sasso, as so many of, of us have had in town, and they know this individual. He served in World War II. He was part of the Japanese occupation force. He speaks fluent Japanese, um, and he played a, cru a crucial role in uh, turning Japan into one of our strongest allies today, and they were a bitter foe at the time. So I have a proclamation to read in Mr. Sasso's honor. I will read our Memorial Day proclamation first from the township. Since our nation's founding, America's sons and daughters have given their lives in service to our country. Today, we pay tribute to those who have paid the ultimate price to defend the United States and the principles upon which America was founded. Throughout our nation's history, our course has been secured by brave soldiers, sailors, airmen, marines, and coast guardmen. These courageous and selfless warriors have stepped forward to protect the nation they love, fight for America's highest ideals, and show millions that a future of liberty is possible. All who wear the uniform of the United States are serving at a crucial hour in history, and each has answered the great call to serve our nation on the front lines of freedom. As we continue to fight terrorism and promote peace, let us pray for the safety and strength of our troops, their families, and for those loved ones who have, they have lost. Today, our servicemen and women continue to inspire and strengthen our nation, going be above and beyond the call of duty as part of the greatest military the world has ever known. Americans are grateful to all those who have put our nation's uniform and to their families, and we will always remember their service and sacrifice for our freedoms. We ask God to protect those fighting in distant lands, and we renew our promise to support our troops, their families, and our veterans. This Memorial Day, we express our deepest appreciation to the men and women who gave their last full measure of devotion so we might live in freedom. We cherish their memory and pray for those and for pray, pray for peace for which they laid down their lives. We mourn with the families and friends of those who have lost and hope they find comfort in knowing their loved ones died with honor. Now therefore, I, Owen Henry, Mayor of the Township of Old Bridge, Township Council, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, do hereby proclaim this Memorial Day, May 29th, 1923, a solemn day our country unites to pay tribute to the fallen, which demonstrated the strength of their convictions and paid the ultimate cost of freedom. Thank you. And now we continue in with our Grand Marshal. Armando Sasso is the 2023 Grand Marshal for the Township of Old Bridge Memorial Day Parade. 
He was born on August 18th, 1923, in Jersey City. As a child, he was a self-taught singer, musician, and always sang in the parks. He won, he won his first contest sponsored by radio station WHOM when he was in the first grade. Armando was the only student chosen from the high school's contenders in the nation to be awarded a 10-year scholarship at the Metropolitan Opera Company to study music in 1942. He was able to attend classes for less than a year before being drafted into the Army on April 13th, 1943. Armando served in the United States Army during World War II. He recalls a time during basic training. They were on a 25-mile full pack march when some of the men in the troop started to waver and get tired and some dropped. His sergeant ordered Armando to start singing, which got them all through the last five miles of the grueling march. Once deployed to Osaka, Japan, he was made corporal and served in Company D as a frontline medic. He was promoted to chaplain assistant 405 and remembers the chaplain serving mass every Sunday, at times on the hood of his Jeep. Armando would assist with the singing of the hymns in Latin and served in a field hospital tending to the wounded as well. Armando was awarding the awarded the following medals during his service. American Service Medal, World War II Victory Medal, Asian Pacific Service Medal, and a Good Conduct Medal. Armando was discharged on February 15, 1946. During the demobilization, he moved from New York City, where he started his singing career. He attended New York City College of Music and received a bachelor's degree in music and voice. He had a 30-year career teaching voice, drums, trumpet, violin, guitar, piano, and all strings, brass, and woodwind instruments at St. Peter's College, Rutgers, and then finally for the Cranford Board of Education. He was employed by St. Ambrose as a choir director and organist for the church and taught music in their after-school program. Armando still gives private lessons today, and he's also an accomplished artist in painting. Armando has two daughters, Dia and Nancy, three sons, Milo, Armando, and Leo, and he also has grandchildren and great-grandchildren. He met his wife, Denise, while directing the St. Ambrose Church Choir in 1993. Armando married Denise in 1996 and moved to Oldbridge. Armando and Denise are a very special couple and have been married for the past 27 years. Now, therefore, I, Owen Henry, Mayor of the Township of Oldbridge, Township Council, County of Middlesex, State of New Jersey, do hereby acknowledge and recognize Armando Sasso, Chaplain Assistant, United States Army, as the Grand Marshal on this Memorial Day, Monday, May 29, 2003, and call upon all citizens to commend him and all heroes of this great country who fought to preserve our liberty. Please, a round of applause for Armando. Make sure he hears us. Ed Machinsky, United States Army Staff Sergeant, will be filling in for Armando in the next coming minutes to read his speech. Incumbent VFW Commander, Post 7508. Thank you, guys. Thank you for being here. Ed? Please stand. Ed was born in Jersey City in 1968. His family moved to Carteret shortly afterwards. Growing up, he was a Cub Scout, Boy Scout, Sea Scout. As a child, Ed and his friends liked to play Army a lot. His next door neighbor, Ron Davis, who was known as Sarge and was a Vietnam veteran, gave him his uniform to play in and told him, if you're going to play Army, do it right. Not long after that, Ed knew he wanted to be a soldier and served his country. Ed enlisted in the Army in 1988. He was discharged in 1996. He re-enlisted 
and United States Army Reserves in 2002 and served until he was medically retired 2017. He served in Afghanistan from 2011 to 2012 as part of NATO training mission Afghanistan where he was a rear security gunner on convoy missions totaling over 1,600 miles and NCOIC of depot security when they were at the areas his team was in charge of the main focus of his NATO led missions was to train, equip, and enable to Afghan government to provide effective secu security across the country and develop new Afghan security forces to ensure Afghanistan will no longer be safe haven for terrorists. Ed rose to the rank of staff sergeant and became the non-commissioned officer in charge of the S-4 shop supply at the M.G. William Wagle United States Army Reserve Center in Edison. He holds multiple military occupational specialties that include 11 Bravo Infantry, 92A Logistical Field Supply, and 92 Yankee Supply. Ed moved to Oldbridge in 1997 and married his wife, Sherry Lynn, in 2005. They have two children, a son, Eddie, and daughter, Alexis. They also have a grandson, Christopher, and a granddaughter coming in June. Ed joined VFW Post 9468 in 2013 and was their quartermaster. That post merged with, it, with VFW Post 7508 in 2021 and will be taking over as commander in July of this year. Please welcome Ed Baczynski, who will be representing Amanda. We are proud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everybody. As the mayor said, I am Ed Mashinsky. I'm the incoming commander for Old Bridge Memorial Post VFW 7508. And as you all know, it's unfortunate that our Grand Marshal, Amando Sasso, is unable to be here with us today. However, I am honored to be given this opportunity to give the speech that he prepared for us today. So I'll start. He started with, thank you for inviting me to join you today during this Memorial Day Remembrance in our beautiful town of Old Bridge, New Jersey. I am honored to be the 2023 Grand Marshal. For many Americans, the last Monday in May marks the unofficial start to the summer, a long weekend with the family to barbecue and gather with your friends. For those that served in the military, Memorial Day holds a greater significance. It commemorates the brave men and women who lost their lives defending our great nation. At the core of our military lie unique themes, the selfless desire to serve, and the willingness to sacrifice to defend our great nation. The origin of Memorial Day, first observed over 155 years ago, was then known as Decoration Day, was to beautify the graves in memory of those who fought and died to preserve our union during the Civil War. The holiday name has obviously changed over the years, but its ideals and intentions have not. It's a day where all Americans should take a moment to honor those who made the ultimate sacrifice for our country. Memorial Day is for both grief and celebration, reflecting on the tragic loss of life and recounting the courageousness of their service. As President Harry Truman stated in his address to the armed forces after the death of President Franklin D. Roosevelt, our debt to the heroic men and valiant women in the service of our country can never be repaid. They have earned our undying gratitude. America will never forget their sacrifices. Because of these sacrifices, the dawn of justice and freedom throughout the world slowly casts its gleam across the horizon. The respect and admiration we give our fallen pay tribute to their memory and the lives they lived. We do so by visiting their grave sites or placing flags, wreaths, and other mementos at the memorials within our communities but their final resting place should never be the last place that we gather to share their memories or sit in quiet contemplation. To truly honor the lives, we must share their stories with others to ensure their memories live on even though they are gone. Like the story of Vietnam War hero, Jimmy G. Stewart, an Army Staff Sergeant from West Columbus, West Virginia, one of 58,000 Americans who lost their lives in combat during that war. When five of his fellow soldiers of a six-man squad were wounded, near An K, in May of 1966, Staff Sergeant Stewart held his position to protect his men. He crawled through heavy fire to retrieve ammunition from his comrades, often throwing back enemy-thrown hand grenades. 
When reinforcements arrived, 23-year-old Staff Sergeant Stewart continued to fight and was eventually killed while holding his position. The wounded he gave his life to protect were evacuated. A year later, Staff Sergeant Stewart was posthumously awarded the Medal of Honor. This year marks 50 years since the last combat troops left South Vietnam. No matter where their battlefield was, whether it was in the mountains of Afghanistan, the deserts of Iraq or Syria, over the skies of Europe, the islands of the Pacific, or the frozen terrain of Korea, jungles of Vietnam or elsewhere, the stories of our fallen matter and need to be told. By sharing those stories, we will keep their memories alive and give others a glimpse of military service that aims to inspire to create a better world, stronger nation, and kinder communities. It is up to us to use the gifts secured by these people who made the ultimate sacrifice and do as much good as possible and honor a debt that we can never repay. On Memorial Day, we reflect and share the experience of our fallen loved ones. But tomorrow, in the days that follow, we must act. Let's carry their sacrifice with us in our hearts and strive to honor their memory by being good, faithful, hopeful, and strong, and committed to building a brighter future for all. As Major General John A. Logan, the leader of a Union Veterans Organization, and the congressman who made the case to our country that set the precedence for this holiday said, let no vandalism or neglect, no ravages of time, testify to the present or to the coming generations that we have forgotten as a people the cost of a free and undivided republic. Duty, honor, and country, they lived it and they died for it. As a nation, we must remind ourselves of the future they fought for and to do our best to uphold these values in the days ahead. Remember that freedom is not free. It has been paid for by Staff Sergeant Stewart and over 645,000 other men and women that have lost their lives in service to our great country since World War I. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. God bless you, God bless our heroes, and God bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to do this. Thank you. Thank you. For deserving. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans, white with food. At this time, I would ask our VFW members, John Anavari, Kamai Vitali, Donnie Davis from VFW Post 7508 to join me and remain standing, please, if you can. We are now gonna place the wreaths at our memorials here, honoring those who have lost their lives abroad. Let us pray for our fallen defenders, those men and women who have given their lives in the service of the United States. As our nation pauses today to remember those in the military who have given their lives for freedom, we enjoy, we pray you would have all us look into the, <coughs> excuse me, uh, strength, comfort, and guidance. Be with all who serve in our armed forces. Bless them and their families. Grant your loving protection. Let peace prevail among all nations. 
O God, especially let your mercy rest upon our land, even as we acknowledge with thanksgiving your past goodness and, and to this country. If it is your will, preserve the lives of the men and women in uniform as they defend our citizenry. Most of all, we pray that you would turn the hearts of all, military and civilian, to your holy word, where we found the true peace for our sinful souls and surpasses all understanding. Keep us respondent of sin, move us to know, take hold and treasure your saving grace. In this peace and the hope for eternity, we pray. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come upon each of us and remain with us forever. Amen. 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 As residents, you continue to inspire and motivate, motivate all the elected officials in this town. Um, and as we get on with our lives, let us never forget those who have given their lives so that we can get on with ours. Please thank a veteran. I couldn't help but notice in our audience is Mr. Dwayne Paulson. Dwayne, a highly decorated Old Bridge veteran, Purple Heart, former Grand Marshal. Dwayne, you're a, you're a gift. Thank you. Please say hello and thank him for his service and his family. His son has also followed in Dwayne's footsteps and served in the military. So thank you, everyone, for coming. Thank you for sharing a few minutes with us. And I know I'm preaching to the choir because you're here. But get out and spread the word. We must remain strong as a township and as a nation. Thank you, everyone. Please enjoy the rest of your day. And stay safe, be healthy, and be well. Thank you. <laughs>